Hello everyone, welcome to another In the Studio. Today we will be discussing bass farts. They happen all the time in dance music, especially the kind of music that I like to listen to, the kind of music that I make, um, you know, the deep progressive realm of dance music and related genres. I'm talking about sounds like this. That, that big bass wash sound. This one here. So I haven't actually made a sound or done a video on these types of um, bass fart sounds on my channel yet. So I figured let's, uh, let's go ahead and make one. So let's do it. So what I'm going to do is uh, just mute this guy here and let's make a copy of this. Um, synth and I'll recreate it um, in the synth and we will redo the processing as well. It's pretty simple to make, but let's uh, let's dive in. Okay, so I used a reactor to make this. I'm just gonna make it, I'm just gonna clone this, specifically Monarch. Um, does a great job for these type of sounds. So what I will do is just go to an empty pattern here, whenever let's use 12, that's fine. Put a little MIDI clip down. And first you want to decide okay, how long do you want this um, sound to be? And I think I'm just going to go for what I had, which was, um, let's see, G, it's a G note here. And we're going to go start on beat two and play two beats here. I'll just plop that down right there. Okay. Um, and then let's put this on another mixer insert. So 36 I have set up. So we'll move that over one track to 36. And let's go ahead and initialize the patch here so we can redo this. So we'll go here, boom, and reset this. Okay, so um, within the synth itself, Monarch is great for this. You know, those classic um, Moog sounds really lend themselves to work with these types of bass washes and, and bass farts very well. So I'm going to use a saw wave um, for oscillator one. And we'll put that up one octave. So we'll have the range at 16. And we're also going to use a second oscillator, which I will also have as a saw wave. And this one I'll detune down one octave, or not detune, but I'll pull it down one octave. And I will detune it though here a little bit. So I'm going to slightly detune it, maybe around 16 cents. And then, you can hear what that sounds like so far. See, it doesn't, it's nothing like it. So. <laughs> okay, a lot, lot, lot of work to be done there. Um, you know what? Actually, for these types of sounds, um, the reverb is essential. Um, so I'm actually going to put the reverb on the sound before I even start messing with any of the other settings. So this is an instance where I want to actually put the reverb on the insert itself because I want to really drench this in reverb. Um, so I'm going to put it on the insert rather than a send track. So I, I want to take away a lot of the dry signal and really wash this sound out. So I'm going to use the, the vintage verb. I'm going to keep it on the classic concert hall. The 1970s color is great because it's got a, a, like a, a dirtier kind of darker vibe, which is, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to probably mix this in around 50% and I'm going to go for a big decay time, which is what you usually want a fairly long decay time on these types of sounds. So I might go for around 10 seconds here and uh, yeah, I'll leave the pre delay. I'll leave the pre delay on. Okay. And then I'll just design it with the reverb on and then we'll do a few other bits of processing, but Okay, so we have our two oscillators, two saw waves. I'm going to 
mix in a little bit of noise as well here and maybe add a little bit of load just to kind of beef things up a little bit. All right, so you can hear what it sounds like now. Yeah, still need to shape it. So the, the, the main thing that's gonna give this its shape is the filter envelope. So I'm just gonna leave the, the amp envelope alone and we'll play with the filter envelope here. So I want a slower attack on this. So let's push the attack up. Um, if you do around there, also increase the decay a little bit. We need to um, turn up the contour here, which is the depth of the filter envelope. So let's turn the contour up a little bit so we get some of that filter envelope action. And let's turn this down. Give it a little bit of resonance here. I'm gonna be around two. It's probably good. And let's turn the turn the cutoff down. Something like that. Yeah. Just turn this up a little bit. And then you can just, you know, depending on your track and what you're what you're after, you can, you know, tweak the filter envelope settings, the the cutoff and the resonance and all, and all that fun stuff. But really, the the main shaping is, you know, with the filter and the filter envelope. So that is shaped the way I want it to sound. Um, so we're done with the sound design part. Pretty pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. Um, so the, the next thing that I think is important for these types of fart sounds, bass fart sounds, is distortion. Just adding distortion after the reverb um, really brings it to life and gives it uh, some extra character and oomph, if you will. So I'm just going to throw on the blood overdrive here and let's see what that sounds like. I mean, and for me, right, for, for this purpose, that's fine. That's just giving, that's just kind of roughing up the, the, the reverb a little bit and giving that a little, little extra boost. So I'm fine with that. You can experiment with whatever distortion you like to use, but for the sake of the video, this is fine. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, actually run it through this Moog multi-filter and I'm not running it through this to actually filter it per se, um, but this this plugin just um, just adds something. Um, you're actually getting a little bit of drive here, and it just it just adds a nice bit of extra character to it. So let's play it without it and with. I just, I just like what it does to the sound. So I'm gonna run it through this Moog um, multi-filter just for some extra character. Um, and then all I would probably do here um, after that is, is maybe roll off some of the lows. Um, I mean, in this little example here, I already have a low bass rolling along, so I don't want it to conflicting too much in the very low end, so. Um, I'm going to grab an EQ or a, and uh, just roll off the low end, probably maybe everything below around 100 hertz to start with. And then depending on what other elements and low end you have on your track, you can take as much out as you need. Yeah. 
And then you could do things like um, maybe a little side chain might be beneficial for your track. Um, things I've done in the past is, you know, maybe send it to um, an auxiliary track um, with a little bit of delay, perhaps. Um, if you want a little extra space and delay swirls going on with, with, with the reverb tails. Um, something else you can do is maybe auto pan the tail, but maybe automate in some auto panning um, after the initial hit. So you kind of get some nice back and forth swirling action with the, the reverb tail. So you can, you can get a little bit more creative with it. Um, there's lots you can do, but that's kind of the basics of how you make a sound like this. So hopefully you enjoyed this little bass fart video. Um, that's it for today. Take care everyone and I will catch you later. Cheers.